Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to the next edition of Monday Night Live. This is Nisha Salas Hyphenberry, who's a labor and delivery nurse and is getting her certification as a breastfeeding consultant. May get some more certifications in the near future. <laughs> Lined up to be a doula and a childbirth educator as well. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. And this is Monday Night Live, and we welcome you. Uh, if you have a relative that always forgets to catch us live, send them a text message right now and say they're live. You can ask your questions. There's Don from Gallatin, Tennessee. Hey, neighbor. We were just by your yeah, way. We were. Hey, Natalie is that, Stone. John, is that our John Barry? No, that's a different. <clears throat> oh, okay. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Thanks, John Barry, for the super chat, yeah. brother or cousin, whichever. <laughs> yeah, whichever. <laughs> Uh, we're going to try to answer as many of your questions as we can tonight. They go by very fast. We have moderators in the comments. We have Paola, we have Kevin, and we have Mitzi. And a lot of times they'll answer beginner questions in the in the chat. So if somebody answers you and they've got a blue wrench by their name, take They're it to official. the bank. They're take official. it to the bank. Hey, Holly. Thank you, Holly Crazy. Uh, I've got uh, a few super chats before we even went live. Tia said that she stopped caffeine and dairy a week ago, and now she's having headaches. That's that's yeah. withdrawal symptoms. That's going to last somewhere between three and 14 days. Annoying, but <clears throat> nothing dangerous. Right, and potentially worth it. So stick with it for at least two weeks. The headaches will go away, and then you can see if you're getting any benefits by eliminating those things. Uh, JS said, what about uh, iodine-rich carnivore foods? I've got an entire video on this YouTube channel about iodine-rich foods, all of which, except for one, are carnivore options. Uh, Danette said, what about low blood sugar and non-diabetics? It is real, Danette. Uh, typically, if you eat a high-carbohydrate meal, you're going to spike your insulin. When your insulin comes back down, it goes too low, and then you have, you have low blood sugar, and then you have to eat again to, in order to feel normal. As you turn down your carbohydrate intake, that will happen less and less and eventually stop when you're low carb enough. Thank you, Shervin, very much for the super chat. Well done for you and your mom. Okay, I'm caught up. Uh, thanks to those of you saying that our maternity pics were amazing and beautiful and gorgeous. Didn't Nisha look good too? <laughs> if I look puffy, it's because they've made me cry. Like I'm all in my feels. If you've been pregnant, you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Very hormonal. Everything yeah. makes me want to cry. I walk in the living room. She's bawling. I'm Literally, like, what's wrong? She's like, much. I'm so happy. I just, I was like, I just love back. It's so, much. look, I'm going to cry again. Don't do it. Don't do it. Can't, I take my mascara off. But uh, yeah, so if you don't follow me on Instagram or Facebook, Nisha loves it on both. You can go see our lovely photos. Thank you to Alana Milby, who's our favorite yes. photographer. Yeah, she is wonderful. You see any good questions uh, over yeah, there? Yeah, a lot of people <clears throat> saying great job with the interview with Dr. Chafee. Yep, yeah, I had a great time chatting with him. Channel? It's It's on his YouTube channel now, and uh, we chatted for about an hour. Uh, seemed like a very intelligent doctor. And I think he's probably going to do some good work in this space. Mm -hmm. Shervin wants to know. Um, I got my A one C. No, that's uh, that's Shervin. You did that Already, one. yeah. Oh, okay. Well done, Shervin. All Keep right. up the great work and teach your teach your friends how to do it. Um, anything that we need to start out with announcement wise? Oh, oh, <laughs> we're going to be away. And so uh, hopefully we can do our lives. But if not, like we'll post on here and let you guys know we are doing some work with our good friend rebecca farmer and we're also going to see some of you guys week after next before you go on the low carb cruise so that's very exciting we can't wait to see you all mitzi champion says share this video i think that is a fine idea <laughs> mitzi if any of you guys think that what we talk about this evening might help uh, people who are on your social media, you're welcome to click the share button right down in the corner and share this out with the rest of the world. You never know whose life you might improve. Cindy wants to know, this is a great question. What are your thoughts on carnivore for an old diabetic dog? Cindy, 100% dogs are carnivores. I would convert your old dog. <clears throat> I think she's talking about her husband. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Slowly, over one to three months, very slowly decrease the kibble and increase the meat. Um, you might, since they're an older dog, you might start with cooked meat and some cooked eggs. And you'll also notice that you're going to have to lower the insulin that you give your old dog. 
not my words. Those are her words. And before long, that old dog might not need any insulin whatsoever and might stop acting like an old dog. Thank you, Ashley. Ashley, we chat. love you too. Thank you, Katie, very Thank much. You, Katie. Um, Lauren, is it dangerous to go from eating the Snickers bar to carnivore the next day? Uh, there's zero danger in converting overnight from standard American crap diet to the carnivore diet. No danger whatsoever. You might have some carbohydrate withdrawals. Uh, this can last from three to 14 days, just like the withdrawals from any addictive substance. But after that, you're going to start to feel much, much better and start to really rock your new carnivore diet. Now, it's also not necessary to convert overnight. You can convert over a month or two from standard American junk, highly processed, factory-made crap diet to carnivore or keto or ketovore. You can transition over a month if you want to. There's no rush. I just want you to transition ultimately to eating a proper human diet because you deserve the benefits it's going to give you. Shout out to Vince who shared this video on MeWe and oh, on Twitter. Thank you, Vince. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, so Sydney wants to know, can I eat a proper human diet and use peanut oil? So peanut oil is very high in omega-6 fatty acids, which uh, more and more research seems to be showing is very inflammatory and may even contribute to the chronic medical conditions that we try to help people reverse. I don't recommend peanut oil at all. We used to use it back in the day, but we wouldn't touch it now. I recommend you use butter, ghee, lard, bacon grease, beef tallow, duck fat. Duck fat. If you want to use a plant-based oil, then we recommend coconut oil, avocado oil, or olive oil. Um, let's see. Uh, this is a good one. Where Natalie go? Stone shared this to Facebook. Yeah, Thank Natalie. you, Natalie. Thank you. Alberto says, hello from Torino, Italy, and to Granny Berry. Um, I'm also going to translate this video to my 94-year-old ketovore mom tomorrow. She enjoys listening to your voice. I, I love, love it. That. I love That's it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Donna, for the super chat. Uh, <laughs> Carrie. What's up, Carrie? Uh, all right. Kat wants to know, how do you transition after doing omnivore? So depending on what your definition of omnivore that, you know, that will differ. Yeah. I'm assuming you mean eating whole foods, vegetables and meat, and right. you're just going to cut down to low carb vegetables where you yep. may have been eating yams, um, parsnips, carrots, and things like that. You'll stop using those and increase cruciferous vegetables, or maybe even cut down on most vegetables and, and increase the meat increase and increase protein. the eggs. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's very simple to do. You just think about the concept as the carbohydrate knob. And so you might, as an omnivore, you might be eating 150 or 200 total grams of carbohydrates a day. Just turn that down. Keep turning it down until you feel great, until you start looking closer to how you want to look in the mirror. Uh, good things will come when you turn down your carbohydrate knob. Uh, hey, Paul, thanks a lot. Michelle says, alternate day fasting, what are your thoughts and how long should it be done? It depends on how much stored fat that you have, uh, Michelle, that you want to get rid of. Uh, alternate day fasting is very, very safe. You can do alternate day fasting, which means you would eat one or two or three meals today. Then tomorrow you wouldn't eat any meals at all. Then the next day you would eat your regular meals and the next day you would fast again. You can do that indefinitely. There's no, no limit to how many times you can do that cycle. Uh, as your ideal body weight, your ideal body fat percentage, as you approach that and get closer to that, then you don't have the compelling reason to do that as often. But if you enjoy it, it helps you save time and save money, and it helps your body look more like you want it to look and helps you feel more like you want to feel both physically and mentally. You can do that from now on. Perfectly safe. Uh, this is a great question. Michael, what do you think of paleo for a beginner? So both Ken and I came from a paleo way of eating. I think it's a really great gateway. Yep. Uh, the main difference between paleo and keto, low carb, carnivore, keto, or whatever, paleo really puts a lot of emphasis on plants, fruits. And, yep, which <laughs> equals carbohydrates. Right? Yep. Some people do very well yep. on paleo. A lot of us need to cut down the vegetables and make that a smaller percentage and increase the meat, protein, mm -hmm. dairy, um, if you can tolerate it, and eggs. Yep. And so paleo is a great thing. Basically keto, the keto that we talk about is real, whole food, one ingredient, real actual things that either grew in the dirt or grazed on 
what grew in the dirt. Keto actually is paleo with the knob turned down. Yeah. So when you're eating less than 20 total grams a day, then that's keto paleo. Keto paleo. Yeah, right. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So I think paleo is a great start. It's a great gateway diet, just like I think the vegan diet is a great gateway diet. The vegetarian diet, those are great first steps towards a proper human diet. I don't think they are the proper human diet, but I think that they're great first steps and a great way for you to start to be able to listen to your body's feedback. <clears throat> Adam, another doctor says vegetables, nuts, and fruits have dense chemicals and are very, very harmful, even berries. What is your opinion, Adam? Uh, yeah, so all plants do have defense chemicals built into their cells. That's 100% true. There's no doubt about that. <clears throat> Cooking and soaking and sprouting will greatly decrease the amount of these defense phytochemicals in plants. Uh, some of us can eat those and it doesn't seem to affect us. Other people can eat those and it is very, very inflammatory. It kind of depends on you personally. Uh, that's why I love the 90-day the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs challenge because there are no phytochemicals in beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. So you eliminate those completely. Then at the end of that 90 days, you can add back in some veg, see how your body reacts. And then you know for sure, for fact, for true, if you are sensitive to them or not. My eyes have become less puffy in just a few minutes. <laughs> That's so funny. Sunny says, can you please shout my son, Anthony Jackson, out? Tell him to listen to his mama about changing his diet. Anthony Jackson, listen to your mama. Don't make me come over there. Listen, we all, get to, we all get to a point where we're like, should have listened to my mama. You can just get Anthony, over that part. Anthony, let me take you. Let's time travel. We're going to go in the future 20 years, and I 100% guarantee you you're going to say, man, I wish I'd listened to my mama. Won't he? 100%. Yeah. yeah. Just go ahead and do it now. Why wait? Um, Zop. 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 Did, did, yeah. Okay. Is it okay to drink diet or zero calorie soda while on carnivore if it helps satisfy your sweet tooth and keeps you compliant on the carnivore diet? I think for some people it it it, it is one of the crutches that they need for a few weeks or a few months on keto or ketovore or carnivore is to keep drinking their diet sodas. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want you to think about what exactly do you mean by sweet tooth? What does that term mean? Because to me, that term means uh, you're addicted to sugar and you're addicted to sweet things. And if you don't mind being an addict, then you can keep drinking your diet sodas. But just remember, every time you spend that two or three or four or five bucks for a diet Pepsi, diet Coke, diet Dr. Pepper, uh, you're supporting a huge multinational corporation that makes billions of dollars a year that doesn't give a damn about anybody's health. So keep that in mind. In my experience, most people who ask me this question if I check back in on them in a few months, they're either cut down to almost never drinking it or don't drink it anymore because you're naturally just going to become less interested in that type of thing. Yep. So I think it's fine in the beginning as long as you're working <clears throat> towards, you know, tapering off of it. Yep. And also on Nisha's channel, she's got a hack of how you can decrease slowly and stop ultimately your diet soda consumption. Sam, I've been new carnivore for two months, losing a lot of weight, and I'm feeling great. Trying to lose a lot of weight, but I would like to add some vegetables back into my diet. I really miss a good salad. Would this hinder my weight loss? It, it will probably slow down your weight loss, Sam, to some degree. Might be a tiny bit, might be a lot of bit, uh, but eat a salad and see what happens. Um, but you know what? If Sam wants to make his one cheat meal a week, a salad, a right. BS salad, throw some bacon on there, throw some <laughs> boiled eggs. eggs. Cheese, Throw some anchovies on there. High fat dressing, mm. blue cheese, ranch. Make your own dressing if you can. Yep. Make sure it's get made with a good oil. Right. And if that's your one cheat a week, I, 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 I bless that. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Melissa, breastfeeding mama. Hey, tracking to make sure I'm eating enough. Averaging 350 grams of protein, boom, and 200 and 250 grams of fat. Is yeah. this okay? Per day, girl? Yeah. yeah. yeah that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And I love it that you're tracking, but just keep in mind that if you're eating until you're comfortably stuffed with lots of fatty meat and Sometimes eggs with the yolk. it takes the pressure off of mamas to worry, it. am I eating enough? I if it. they I keep it. up with it and they're like, they yeah. know yeah. I'm eating enough. But you're definitely, you're definitely eating, eating enough. enough. Yeah. So good for you, mama. Have you seen anything over there? Uh, Deborah says, do you have an opinion on using uh, Prolia? I, yeah, you might need it right now, but after a, a few months of a proper human diet, Deborah, you can talk to your doctor <clears throat> about not using that anymore. Carol, thank you so much. Thanks, JM. Is that John Mayer? 
That's John Mayer. <laughs> That'd be JFM if it were. JCM. No. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Uh, somebody um, wants to know. They said, I'm, I'm brand new to this. Please tell me the right oils to use. Go, Disha. If you want to include a vegetable type oils, olive oil and avocado oil. And coconut. And coconut oil right? are okay. Um, optimally, we find less inflammation from duck fat, bacon fat, beef tallow, butter, ghee. Yep. Else? It can be Tell bison anything. tallow. Bison it can be the tallow, fat yeah. from any animal. It could probably be snake tallow. That yeah. might be a challenge to render mm -hmm. that. But if, if somebody could render me a pint of snake tallow, I would sure try a tablespoon full of it. Uh, mommy does keto. This is from Luke Casey. That's where my bracelet. Who got I, this for I me? bought this for her today. Isn't yes, that beautiful? It is. He yeah. does very well. It's from Lucchese. He, he's, y'all, he seriously called I've, it I've that. always, listened. He said, Lou Cheesy, what's that? And I looked over and I was like, Lou Casey. <laughs> yeah, that happened. I've always heard of Lou Casey boots, but I've never actually seen the sign. And I was like, Lou Cheesy, what is that? I is that a restaurant? He joking, but he, never, he didn't correct himself. He's not online. joking. <laughs> I did not know, but now I know because Nisha laughed for about an hour and a half. It was hilarious. Huzzah. Because he's so smart, and when he does stuff like that, it makes me feel better, you know? Uh, Kimber says, I've been on triple B and E for eight weeks. Congratulations. My gut hasn't settled down yet. I'm not going every day, but when I do, it's uncontrolled liquid diarrhea. Please help. Yeah, if it's been eight weeks, they're, keep in mind, mm -hmm. with any of these, uh, anywhere on the proper human diet spectrum, eating that way does not make you immortal. And it does not make you bulletproof. So if you have a new symptom and it's gone on for eight weeks, you need to go see your doctor because there's most likely something else going on that needs to be addressed medically. Uh, Natasha, welcome back, Natasha. 100% off of 10 years of Pepsi. <clears throat> Thanks to your advice, May 17th will be three years on keto and 180 pounds Natasha down. Love, beautiful. Everybody, Everybody hit the thumb for yes. Natasha Love. Well done. Love it, love it. Uh, Bob L. Mm -hmm. says, how would a carnivore get his his or her daily requirement of fiber? It's a good question. Bob, what is the daily requirement <clears throat> for fiber? Is fiber an essential nutrient in the human diet? That's a trick question. It's not. If you never ate another ounce of fiber for the rest of your life, Bob L., you would be fine. There, we do not need fiber. Fiber does not help us in any way. All of the research about fiber is observational research. It doesn't prove anything. It just show, shows a possible association. Okay? You don't need fiber in your diet. That's a big medical myth. It's kind of one of the reasons I wrote the book. Uh, Paul says, Dr. Barry, my wife thinks you said that we can cheat once a week. Can you please clarify? Uh, Paul, if your wife wants to cheat with a big salad that's full of boiled eggs and sardines and anchovies and bacon and chicken breast, then if, if that's her once a week cheat, that's that's nah, that's okay. I mean, you when know, he says how bad cheat, is that? His cheat means real food, maybe yeah. a few more vegetables. Yeah. Every now and then I cheat on carnivore with some Brussels with, sprouts right. or asparagus. It doesn't mean go to your favorite yeah. bakery. But if you ever see me with a Dairy Queen blizzard in my hand, Take me to the hospital and get me a CAT scan of my head because I have had head trauma. I don't cheat like that because who would I be cheating if I did that, Nisha Solis Me. Yeah, I'd be and cheating you, you and me and, and Beckett. Kids. I'm not going to cheat yeah. my family. I'm going to, because when I eat crap food, I'm cheating my entire family out of time they could be spending with me. I'm not going to do that. Kelly says, can the proper human diet fix gastritis? I've 100%. been on it for seven weeks and I have lost 17 hundred percent. Kelly, keep at it. Now, Kelly, you may be one of those people who needs to be a carnivore. You may even need 90 days of the lion diet, which <clears> is <throat> just beef, salt, and water. Just to get basically the ultimate elimination diet to let your stomach rest and heal. And then you can start to add in other things. But yes, ma'am, you keep doing what you're doing. Your gastritis will be history. J.R. Johnson. My dad's 88. His PSA is 170. They're sure his cancer has spread. Would carnivore help at this stage? A, a very, very low carbohydrate diet like ketovore or carnivore might slow down 
the aggressiveness and the spread of his prostate cancer, it's not going to cure his cancer. If his PSA is 170, mm. then it most likely is metastatic. Uh, but uh, and so with that being said, he's 88 years old. If he wants to eat his oatmeal and have a moon pie for dessert, let him. Go. Let him, let him. I wish we could go back in time, JR, and, and talk to your dad 10 years ago. Uh, but it, yeah, but now if he's game 100%, carnivore will slow down the, the, the metastasis and slow down the aggressiveness. What'd you see? I was something about postpartum hair loss. And I couldn't, I don't know where it was. It's a real thing, it happens. Yeah, you can and, lose it, a it's, chunk of air. and it has usually not that much to do with what you're eating, That's it's right. hormones re regulating, and mm -hmm. as long as you're eating. Good amount of protein, healthy fats, <clears throat> it will resolve it. And so I had it and I was eating basically carnivore, which is yep. all protein. And I still had hair loss brought through here. Of course, you can see that that has. Yeah, that's resolved. resolved. You should have seen it when it started <laughs> growing back. She had these huge tuft of baby yeah. hair that were about this long and they stuck out like horns, which I found quite appropriate on certain days of the month. <laughs> Pauline says, what is a proper human diet? Pauline's new. And that's fine, Pauline. Pauline, a proper human diet is an ancestrally appropriate diet. It's foods that we've been eating for over 15,000 years on this planet. It is nutrient dense. It is low carbohydrate. It is completely unprocessed. The only processing that, that happens on a proper human diet is that you chop stuff up and cook it. That's the only processing. If what you're about to eat came from a factory, came in a cardboard box, came in a plastic bag, then it's most assuredly not part of a proper human diet. That's what a proper human diet is. Uh, West Coast Outdoor has been carnivore one week, currently on TRT, alkaline phosphate 32, LDL 105, HDL 39, triglyceride 78. Any <clears throat> thoughts on these numbers? These numbers look great. Uh, the alkaline phosphatase, if you're worried about that, you can get it rechecked in three months. Uh, but your triglycerides and your HDL, your HDL is still a little lower than I would like to see it, but your triglycerides are, are great. Keep eating very low carbohydrate, real whole foods, and see if those numbers don't continue to improve. Ivan wants to know what you think about canned cod liver. I love canned cod love liver. It. I have about 10 cans stacked up in the in the pantry right now. It is, it's my favorite liver, really, because it, it's so mild. It doesn't taste like liver at all. And it not only has all of the vitamins and minerals that all liver has, but since it comes from the ocean, it's also an excellent source of omega-3 fatty acids and iodine. I really love cod liver. If any of you guys haven't tried it, you should try cod liver. Melissa, I'm not making enough milk for baby. I'm having to be away from her for 12 hours. I get about 15 to 16 ounces. She drinks three bottles, five ounce bottles, and one goat milk. How old is she? Uh, she didn't say how yeah. old she is. <clears throat> it's really hard when you're having to work. She's Melissa. getting 15 ounces a day and one goat milk. So she's getting 20 ounces a day of milk. So uh, the best thing to do to up your supply is, I don't know how old the baby is, depending on how old the baby is, you might have missed the window to increase supply. But breast milk is supply and demand. So you can increase feedings or you can increase pumping. Or both. Or both. Um, if you are pumping, have a picture of baby, have a video of baby looking really, really cute. That tricks your brain to thinking the baby is with you and increases the hormones that help let down. Okay. But, you know, don't stress out. That's, don't stress. That, that doesn't help anything. Don't stress. Right? You're doing great. Um, but if you want to try power pumping, look up power pumping schedule. And sometimes that will help production as well. Make sure you're eating enough and drinking enough and resting enough. Yep. Yeah, and, and still skin to skin. Regardless of the baby's age, yeah. as much skin to skin as you can have with that baby, uh, snuggling, mm -hmm. loving, snuggling, kissing, but rooting, goat, goat all that stuff. Goat milk is a great alternative, so yep. you're on the right track. Yep. So. Yep. Good job, Mama. Who that, Dave? Is Bulletproof Coffee okay? I'm using heavy cream or uh, using heavy cream or half and half. Yeah, so stop the half and half because that's half ass. Use heavy cream or even better, use butter. I got some goat butter and man and coffee. I got some goat butter in my decaf right now. It's freaking delicious. Uh, but yeah, butter is the best option. Uh, but heavy cream's not terrible. Now, uh, there's nothing magic about bulletproof coffee or, or keto coffee or fatty coffee. It's just to keep you fasting longer. 
So if you're starting to get really hungry, then you can add a little fat to your coffee and that'll turn off your hunger signal and you can fast for longer. Uh, baby seven months old. So at seven months old, baby can use goat milk really, really well. Yep. So keep your pumping that you have. Don't stress out because goat no, milk no, is a don't great, stress. it's a great, baby yep. does great on it. Like yep. Beckett has drank goat yep. milk for yep. how long now? Yep. He loves if it. you're still giving your seven month old baby 15 ounces of breast yeah, milk a day, great. honey, yes, 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 <clears> yes. Uh, thank you, Dolores. Jared, I just hit 90 days of strict carnivore, lost 35 pounds. Boom. Blood pressure down 30 points. Say that again. 35 pounds, blood pressure down 30 blood points. Pressure. So his blood pressure went down. I'm eating not the done. There's diet. myrrh. And my daily heartburn is completely gone. At Same. least six friends are ready to try it. That's it, Jared. Thanks Lead for by all example. Your wisdom and encouragement. Son, you're Love rocking that. it. Don't ever stop. Uh, people are interested when they see some, some dude that they've known for years and all of a sudden he looks and feels great. They're like, what are you doing, Bubba? That's the moment they're ready to hear what you got to say. Well done. Rebecca, what are the best intermittent fasting times for weight loss, carnivore, or keto? I've got several videos about fasting on this channel. Rebecca, check those out after this live. You can do a daily intermittent fast like I do of 18 to 22 hours, just depending. Uh, or you can do a two-day fast once a week, or you can do a three-day fast every other week, or you can do a five-day fast once a month. All those things are perfectly safe, perfectly physiologically appropriate, ancestrally appropriate, and they're going to help you with autophagy, mitophagy, and with burning excess fat off your body. Uh, Carol says, any information on acupuncture for Hashimoto's thyroid disease? Hey, Carol, I have Hashimoto's. It is in remission at this time. I think acupuncture is fine. It's not going to hurt anything. It may yep. help with your sleep and your stress, which yep. can cause Hashimoto's to be yep. inflamed. But what you really need to focus on is what you're eating. Yep. Cut out all the inflammatory things. Do an elimination diet via yep. carnivore. If you want to join my group, and link in the description. Work on your stress <laughs> level by reading the Daily Stoic. The Daily Stoic. Or any book that you feel like will help you. But yep. that's the one that I use. Um, making sure your sleep hygiene is good. Getting good rest and uh, stress. But cut the carbs. Go carnivore. Figure out, what's, the figure out what foods affect you negatively. Keep a little diary. That's the best way because not we're all, not all created equal. I can eat nut shades. You may not be able to eat nut shades. Right. Like there's a lot of individuality here so yep. nisha and i together have over 600 videos about keto ketovore carnivore fasting uh lifestyle all those things we on on her channel which is nisha loves it or just search for nisha berry on youtube and then on my channel which you're on right now uh, all those videos we put them there for a reason to help you understand this yeah, anybody got bad weather? We just had a little bit of wind. We didn't have anything bad. Nothing near as bad as what happened in Kansas. So, Hey, Bonk, I, I bought some liverwurst today. I bought a pound. He's not even listening to what I just said. He has no idea what I just said. What did you just say? about uh, Something about the weather. Anytime I hear the word weather, my brain goes I'll somewhere else. I'll talk about else. the horrible tornadoes in Kansas. Oh, I know. It was terrible. <clears throat> I saw the video. Yeah. Man, if, if any of you guys have never been in a tornado, it is not so fun. Scary. It yeah. is not fun. Um, Gallant Barbie survived aortic dissection. Wow. Back in 2016, been on carnivore for two months, down almost 20 pounds, feeling good. Just afraid of salt and my blood pressure. Would you still recommend? Carnivore? Yeah, hundred percent. I would recommend, uh, carnivore. Definitely check your blood pressure at least <clears throat> twice a day. Only when you are sitting calm, quiet, and relaxed and chilled out. Write those numbers down and keep up with them. What I think you're going to find, even if you salt your carnivore diet to your taste, I don't mean add extra salt for no damn reason. I mean, if it, if it needs salt, put salt. What you're going to notice is as your insulin level goes back down to low normal, your blood pressure is actually going to come down. And I'm sure you're on one or two or three different blood pressure medications. You might actually be able to get off some of those after a few months of a carnivore diet. Uh, Ashley says, can you explain the benefits of goat milk versus dairy for a toddler looking to transition my 22 month old from nursing to bottles? First of all, well done, mama. 22, 22 months. months. Good job. Well done. Um, the main reason we transitioned Beckett from breast milk to goat milk is the protein is much easier more easily digested yep. by all, everybody. 
everyone, really, not yep. just toddlers, yep. but specifically toddlers as yep. well. Not all goat A2. milk protein is an A2 protein. And most of the cow's milk you can buy in the store is A1, which for most people, it seems to be more inflammatory than the A2 protein mm -hmm. in goat's milk. Uh, so that's the main reason. Also, a lot of children will have skin issues with dairy milk and none with goat milk. Exactly. So there's a lot of things that are yeah. more beneficial with goat milk. You can find goat milk pretty much everywhere now. Walmart carries it. Sprouts yeah. carries it. If you can find a local goat dairy, that would be awesome. Uh, we don't have one locally, but if we did, yep. we would definitely and source it out. It's very healthy and perfectly normal and natural and ancestrally appropriate for your baby, your child to drink goat's milk up until the time they're four, five, six, seven years of age. And at that point, it's time to wean them off of the milk because that's what human beings have done with their babies for millions of years. Millions and, and millions. millions. Have you done a dairy video, Dr. Green? <sighs> Have you done a tinnitus video? I've got it all in my head. I've got it all in my head. <laughs> hey, Matt, thanks so much. Uh, greener fields, how long does it take to heal from adrenal fatigue? Well, it depends on what actual diagnosis you have, greener fields. There's no actual diagnosis of adrenal fatigue. This is a kind of a made-up diagnosis. I totally believe that your symptoms are real, but there's really no such thing as adrenal fatigue. Uh, if your adrenal glands in fact, did become fatigued and stop putting out the hormones they make, you'd be dead in a few hours. So uh, there's something going on with you. You need to maybe see another doctor and don't go to that doctor and say, hey, I have adrenal fatigue. What should I do? Write down your specific symptoms and go see a new doctor and tell them all your symptoms. But don't say the phrase adrenal fatigue, because if you say that, you're going to muddy the water and you might walk out with no more information than you walked in with. Angela, yes, pickled eggs are <clears throat> amazing and fantastic. Yep. Quail pickled eggs, oh, duck pickled so eggs. So good. Any kind of pickled eggs. So good. Just, you know, check and make sure they're not bread and butter pickled eggs. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> because then they're not, yeah. not yeah. as great. Sugar-free pickled eggs are yeah. divine. Thank you, William, so much. Um, well, I think I missed one. <clears throat> I'll find them. I got Look it. it. All right, Monica, I know Whole Foods comes first, but is there any benefit at all to taking collagen powders or is it just money down the drain regardless yeah. of the brand? Yes, yeah. protein powders, collagen powders, branch chain amino acid powders are, everybody listen up, listen carefully. They are all a waste of money. You can get more amino acids, more protein, more branch chain amino acids by eating your fatty meat and your eggs with the yolk. The protein and the amino acids in meat and eggs is going to be more bioavailable, more bioabsorbable, and more biousable. Stop blowing your money on collagen powder. Just eat the, the, the collagen-rich foods. I've got a video on this channel you can watch for free, and then you probably already have some of these foods in your fridge. If not, you can buy some and have them in your fridge and pantry. You can eat a serving each day, and you'll be getting more collagen than you ever got from that stupid Waste of money powder. You know, it feels like you're really doing something. It does. It feels like, yes. This That's is... because we've been programmed to think yeah. that we need those things. To I need a pill, protein. a powder, right. a potion. Angeline, shout out. I've been keto carnivore since January. I no longer have anemia, gastritis, or ingest indigestion. No antacids. It's really changed my life. And... Uh -huh. Down 25 pounds. Oh, and also she lost 25 pounds. Way to go, Angeline. Angeline, Good beautiful. Job. Now teach your friends and family. Uh, Angelic Annihilator. Welcome I love back. that name. <laughs> love it. Last week you said to get a dental implant that's non-inflammatory material. What do you mean? Aren't all implants made of titanium? Uh, you, most are, but there are some that are not. And titanium is one of the le less inflammatory uh, of the implant materials that you can use. I think that's probably the least bad. I don't want you to have okay. any artificial things put in your body, uh, but that's mm. one, of the, one of the least bad that you can use. Carnivore Grammy. Have you heard if anyone's osteo otosclerosis. otosclerosis is reversing? Suddenly I can hear from a long deaf ear, not 100%, but a little bit. It, okay, so let's talk about the, bat, the retina in your eye and your inner ear. These And so the retina on the back of your eye is actually brain tissue. It's just an extension through the optic nerve of brain tissue. Your inner ear, 
your cochlea and all the little nerves in there, that's just an extension of your brain. So it makes perfect sense that many of you are going to notice improved vision and improved hearing by eating a diet that's very uninflammatory, like keto, ketovore, carnivore. And so it doesn't surprise me at all that your hearing has improved a little bit. Now, I don't think that that all you guys are going to go back to 2010 vision and, and being able to hear a pin drop uh, down in the holler. But I do think you're, you're, it's very likely you're going to notice some improvement in those areas. It makes perfect sense. Denise, hey, Dr. Barry, Nurse Nisha. I would love to hear any advice on varicose veins, anything I can do besides surgery to reverse or improve. The Vein Clinic of America doctor said I'm five times more at risk for a clot. Is this true? No, you are at a little bit higher risk of a clot, but not five times. That's, that's pushing it. Uh, so with that being said, if you have the tiny little spider veins, we've heard numerous reports of people saying, hey, after six months of carnivore, my spider veins are much better. But if you have the big ropey varicose vein, what's happened is the, the <laughs> valve in that vein has basically flipped inside out and become incompetent. And so you're probably not going to be able to fix that. That's an anatomical issue. That's a that's a, a part failure issue. You're probably not going to be able to fix that with just diet. There are multiple different little minorly invasive surgical procedures you can have to fix those veins. Make sure and do your research before you lay down on a surgeon's table. Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you, Lynette. Um, where did Thank you so much for all the super chats, Sarah, guys. Sarah, I have Hashimoto's and the NTHFR factor. Did you say you were in remission? What did you do to get? What did you do to get in remission? So yes, I am in remission. My antibodies are under one. My TSH is yep. primo. I just had it checked today. Two point three. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm pregnant. So. Like, and your symptoms? How are your Hashimoto symptoms? Yeah, symptoms are all nearly non-existent unless I do something stupid. Okay. Like eat some junk. Right. Um, so if you want to learn more, like it's a long story, you can come over to my channel. There are several videos about what I did specifically. Um, but the long and short of it is I went carnivore. I figured out what foods inflamed me and what foods didn't. And I'm mostly meat based keto, which means most of most days I eat meat and every now and then I'll eat some onions, maybe some Brussels sprouts. And, the, and tomatoes and things like that, because I know that they do not affect me negatively. So, yep. Elizabeth, uh, uh, remember that salt is sodium chloride. So if you're eating a low salt diet, that could very likely explain your low chloride level. Uh, also, there are there's a list of medications that can give you low chloride. So go through your medicines and see if you're taking one of those. If not, then just eat, uh, yeah, salt your food to taste. Stop eating a low salt diet. Emily, have you ever heard of an adrenal cocktail? If so, what are your thoughts? I have. Uh, there's very, very little research, Emily, that supports such things. There's a little bit, but not enough to be meaningful. Uh, the best thing you can do for your adrenal glands is eat on the proper human diet spectrum. Keto, ketovore, carnivore. Uh, that diet gives you everything your adrenal glands need, number one, but also it eliminates everything that they don't need to be exposed to. And your adrenal glands, their default setting is optimal function. You've just got to stop poisoning them with too many carbohydrates and inflammatory foods. And you've got to give them all of the vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and fatty acids they need. They'll do their job just fine. All right. RJE, my hair is falling out bad. How can I up my protein without having to eat even more? I do intermittent fasting and two meals a day. I'm trying to lose weight. Yeah. Sounds to me like RJE that you're still portion controlling. Stop that immediately. I want you to eat more. I want you to eat until you're so comfortably stuffed that you cannot take another bite of food. And you can do that with two meals a day. 100%. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Do not portion control on keto, ketovore, carnivore. It is not necessary. I know you feel like, what are you saying, Dr. Barry? I will literally gain 100 pounds if I just eat till I'm full. No, that's how you're supposed to do it. That's how we've done it for millions of years. Do you have a video about can't, too much protein? I have, because, I like, have we several. We don't believe that you can yeah, eat too much protein. I have several like, videos about protein. Is there one called that? Too you much protein? No, 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 I don't have one, but that's I a good idea. Yeah. Sam, you guys are awesome. I love this live stream. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Sam. Sam we B. Love you too. Thank we you. Love you too. Uh, PLS Jones, can keto help with POTS? 
Yeah, we've had multiple people with uh, POTS who said, yeah, my symptoms got way less severe. Uh, and I, basically, I'm able to carry on a normal life without uh, fear of getting lightheaded or passing what out anymore. It's a, it's, yeah. a high, it's a blood pressure issue where if you stand up or you move too fast, you can get lightheaded. All right. I'll talk, Lynette, I'll talk to you. <clears throat> Do I have that one? You can pick one if you'd like okay. over there. Uh, BB says, where do vegetables fit into the carnivore diet? Vegetables fit into the animal's mouth. <laughs> and then you eat the animal. That's what carnivore is. You don't have to be carnivore. You don't have okay? to be carnivore. No, but that's just one option. a lot of people option. try it, find they feel so amazing that they never go back. And every, like sometimes on their birthday, they'll have broccoli. Okay. Like, but it's not everybody has to do it. Trish, ask your doctor if you have Gilbert's. It's spelled just like that. Gilbert's syndrome. Uh, a lot of times that can cause your Billy Rubin to be wonky when everything else is normal. Uh, Rose. Hello, Rose. Is there a best time of day to take lisinopril? Lisinopril lasts about 24 hours and it doesn't make you drowsy. So you can take it. You just want to take it about the same time each day, but it can be a morning med or a, uh, evening med, either one. Hey, have you hit that thumb? Thumbs it up. Looks, it has a thumb on. And it, it looks just, looks like, just that. like this. And you just go click and it goes. It gives you a reward if you. Julie it. Jones says, what are the healthy fats that are in a carnivore diet? Animal fats, Animal Julie. Fats, yeah. Butter, ghee. The fat that's attached beef to Beef tallow. Uh, bacon grease. These are healthy fats that humans have been eating for millions, millions of years. Okay. They're good for you. Your body knows exactly what to do with them. You realize that we've only been eating canola oil and soybean oil for like a few decades, right? Before before uh, 1920, no human on the planet ever had eaten soybean oil or canola oil. You understand they're completely artificially made in a factory, right? All the Don't Google it. It's yeah, Google the, uh, how, there's a video, how is canola oil made? It is gross. And I've been told, I've never been in a canola factory, but I've been told that it smells like Putrid butthole in the it's like awful it the smell like of it before awesome. they deodorize it. Yeah. It smells amazing. Okay. Uh, hey, did you know I'm pregnant? Oh, is it time for a bump yeah, day? You guys want to see the bump? Let's see. Look at this dress. I bought this for her today. <laughs> Look at this baby girl. Hello, hey, girl. We have said her name. You can say her name. Yeah. Now. Becky goes, hey buddy blue. <laughs> How many weeks am I? Do you know? Um, uh, you're in the third trimester. I am in the third trimester. I'm a doctor. That's how I think about pregnancy. I am seven-ish months, twenty-eight weeks. However, you want to. We're in the we're in the home stretch. That's that's where we are. Uh, baby girl. I would not buy that cologne, mommy does keto. David, is it true that due to genetics, our bodies will always have a certain amount of body fat for optimum health survival, yes. even on a pH? Excellent, excellent question, David. So. For women, a healthy, normal body fat is from 10, uh, it's from 15% all the way up to 25%. Okay. For men, it's 10% to 20%. So when you see these bodybuilders that have 4% body fat, that you can see the blood veins in their, their abdominal muscles, that's not normal and that's not healthy. And that should not be your goal. Okay. Uh, if you, when your body fat percentage gets low enough to be healthy, you're going to be able to see veins in your arm, maybe here, maybe here. And that's it. You're never, you're ne if you ever see the veins in your abdominal musculature, you're too, too damn skinny. You need to go and eat some, some protein and some fat. Okay. It is not normal to be that skinny. Women lose their menstrual cycle. Men get so weak, they can barely walk. Um, we actually have a good friend. His name's Robert Sykes, and he's a competitive bodybuilder. And he was doing a cut one time. And so they, right before the show, they have to cut their body fat percentage as low as they can possibly get. Muscles. So you can yeah. see all the vascular and all the muscles. And he, Robert is the sweetest guy you've ever met. He is a gentleman. He is a scholar. Yes. But he was just a little butthole. <laughs> he was just a little cranky. He was still super sweet. Yeah. But for Robert, we were like, you're hungry. He had no energy. He had no personality. <laughs> he was just like, hmm. Plus, we it was Ken's birthday. We were all out, out to eat, and we're yeah. all eating all of our, you he know, was fatty meat. He was like, hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, ten to twenty percent is normal and healthy and perfect for men. 
15 to 25% is normal and healthy and perfect for women. We are the fattiest primate on the planet, okay? We're supposed to have some stored body fat. It's normal for us. Uh, hey, Roxana. All right. Um... Oh, this is a very interesting question. Edward wants to know, could a colonic be beneficial when starting carnivore just to jumpstart the plumbing? Edward, your plumbing does not need your help. Your blood vessels do not need you to, 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 to rinse them out. And your gastrointestinal system does not need you to rinse it out. It is self-cleaning if you're eating the right food. And if you've eaten some junk in the, in the past, within three to five days, all that crap's going to be out of your colon. It will be squeaky clean. Uh, relatively speaking, as far as colons go. Brian from Eastern Tennessee. Hey, neighbor. Have you just developed a network of primary care doctors yet that use keto and nutrition to treat instead of acting like a sales rep for pharma in the Tri-Cities area? I don't know of anyone, Brian, in the Tri-Cities area, uh, but I do have a YouTube video called How to Find a Low-Carb Keto Doctor Near You. And in the show notes are six different websites. You can put your zip code in and it'll tell you how, where the nearest low carb keto doctor is. And uh, every day, more and more doctors are signing up to those websites because more and more doctors every day are like, you know, keto makes a lot of sense now that I actually try to remember my biochemistry and my physiology. That actually sounds like, I don't know, the proper human diet. Paul, will you send me a message in our group and remind me so I can tell Autumn to make us uh, eat until you're comfortably stuck? No, it needs to say. I have become comfortably stuffed. Bacon, bacon. Yeah, I'm going to eat you. <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm truly sorry. I apologize. Don't make me snot all Comfortably stuffed. Okay. Um. okay. Sabrina, Nisha, I'm keto and do OMAD. I want to go carnivore, but I love my veggies and avocados way too much. Well, I see benefits if I do at least two days a week carnivore mm. diet. Yes, Maybe. but yep. um, what I recommend, there's a video on my channel called Ketovore, 13 Basics to Ketovore. Basically, that'll walk you through what I recommend for about a month. And that, and but it, it's like basically you, you eat meat every single day until you're like, I need a vegetable. And then you eat a vegetable. Yep. And so it kind of walks you into carnivore. It's a good transition. Yep. Yep. Diet. And 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 I think if you still have benefits that can be gained. Yeah, you're going to think. Doing two days of carnivore a week, three days a week, doing carnivore every other day, and then keto on the opposing days. That's a great strategy. 100%. I love that. Uh, this is baby number two for me. Baby number what for you? How many does this make? Six kids. He got started early. I to did. Be, to be fair. Yeah, I, my 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 oldest son's twelve years younger than me. James wants to know where can I order the the Berry Christmas album? <laughs> uh, to be announced. I think we should totally do that. I don't know about that. Joanna says we need a T-shirt that says "I cheat on carnivore with keto." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Keto is my carnivore mistress. Uh, I'll see keto. Like I have a t-shirt on my channel that says, don't go back in my heart. I couldn't if I fried. So, you know. Oh, I love that. That's cool. Don't go back in my heart. Couldn't if I fried. I've never I heard that part. I fried. Angie, you busted my chops pretty bad on Clubhouse. So they're not asked a question about chocolate cravings. Your no BS way helps me so much. Thank you. Thank you, Angie, for the <laughs> super chat. And you know that I busted your chops with love. I hope you know that. There, hey. Jay, there's one coming up that's going to be perfect for you. God bless Dr. Barry, Nisha, Becca, and Bonnie, and Granny Berry. Thank oh, you so much. Uh, Granny Berry you know. is watching tonight. It, would you guys mind terribly saying hi to Granny Berry and where you're watching from? She loves that. That's she doesn't. My dad says she doesn't care about macro. She doesn't care about keto. All she wants to know is how many people said hi to Granny Berry and where, where they're, they're from. from and, yeah, yeah. She loves it. There's one from Australia, Granny. She doesn't even listen to one. Tucson, her. Arizona. She knows. Hey, Jamie Lee says, what are your thoughts on breast implant illness? My GP suggested That's I have my implants removed. I am really glad I did. Could you do a video? I, that is coming up on my channel. 
I currently have breast implants. Obviously, I'm pregnant, so it's not like I can have those taken out. I already had mine taken out. When I decided to have them, uh, when I, like, it was, oh, maybe my implants contributed to my autoimmune issue. I was trying to get pregnant, so I couldn't really have them taken out then. Then I was pregnant, and I was breastfeeding for 20 months, and then I got pregnant again. So, you know, <laughs> we're yep. working on it. But, yep. yes, we're going to do a video probably together about breast implant illness. Also, there's another term for it, Asia. Isn't that what I What does it stand for? Yeah, I forgot. Mm, we'll talk about it, but yeah. <laughs> uh, it's. It, I think breast implants definitely contribute to some people, not all people, and having them take it, take it out helps some people and not all people. I think uh, almost every person who has breast implants and has had an autoimmune <clears throat> disorder uh, develop needs to do an elimination diet for sure. Remember I said earlier, I don't think it's ideal to have any foreign bodies inside your body. You, you need to only have things in there that Separate were put baby. there by the creator or by your husband. Hey, mommy does keto. Where did you go? Where did that go? Freddie, Freddie Sip uh, says he can't do keto due to trouble digesting fat. Freddie, is... what, what, what happened? Freddie, what you're going to do is you're going to slowly increase the fat. Don't try to switch to keto overnight. Uh, your gallbladder may be floppy. You may not have a gallbladder, in which case you can still eat keto, but you're just going to transition to it slowly over a month or two. And give your gallbladder and your liver time to catch up and get and strengthen up and get prepared. You'll be able to do it just fine. What'd you miss? Uh, mommy does keto. Had a question and then it literally just disappeared. Uh, I when that happens. Know what Come on, you two. Sorry, mommy does keto. Type it in again. Uh, J I did Jamie's already. Why did that disappear so fast? It, I just saw it. I'm sorry. Ryan says, Dr. Barry, how do I talk to my father who is 75? He's overweight and he's pre diabetic. How do I talk to him about carnivore? Ryan, first of all, have you have you been walking the walk? Have you reversed all of your chronic health problems and now have an ideal body weight or close to it? Because typically, once you do that first, then parents and uncles and aunts and other relatives are much more likely to listen to you. I would just maybe share some of my videos with, with your dad. A lot of people, if they have an older parent, they find that that really helps a lot, that if it comes from you, the, the child, they don't listen to you. But if you're like, hey, there's this doctor on, on, on the, the computer, talking about eating meat and how healthy it is would you let's watch this maybe watch it with your dad hey joanna says don't forget to like and share that's right joanna thank you joanna Kai that's May. a great idea hey girl welcome back what's better to monitor blood glucose or ketones i'm doing terribly sticking to keto and feel like i need to go back to blood monitoring to keep myself on track yeah i think definitely glucose keeps you more honest I agree. Because you can get away with eating some things and still be in ketosis, but maybe not seeing optimum um, yep. insulin. Yeah. And if you can talk your doctor into Levels. ordering a CGM. Oh, yes. Like this. Then you can do this. Watch this. Show them how you do it, Nisha. This little sensor checks her blood sugar every five minutes and she can hold her phone up to it. First, I just need it. Look at that baby. Oh, look at that. Isn't he the cutest? Okay, sorry. I'm that mom. It has an app on her phone. And so she. I just do this. Does that. And it beeps. And then it shows me. So that's like the. Look at that curve over how am I, where am I here? Here, I look, at, look, look how flat that curve is. When you're eating ketovore or carnivore, that's the kind of blood sugar curve you can expect. Even if you're currently a type 2 diabetic or have prediabetes, or if you're a type 1 diabetic, you can still have a beautiful flat curve like that by eating low carb enough to be clear every time i show this people are like do you have gestational diabetes no i don't i don't have any type of diabetes i'm doing this because i refused the glucose test because i did not want to um party chug 50 grams of sugar in very 75 grams 75 cool. grams okay um and so instead of doing that i just check my sugars for two weeks and i give it to my midwife and then i don't have to do the glucose tolerance test shirley said that you're cute and i'm funny Oh, thanks, Shirley. Thanks, Shirley. Thank you all. Oh, my goodness, Jane. Thank you so much. Hey, Crusader, thank you so much. To uh, Dr. Barry and beautiful nurse Nisha, what is your opinion on cod liver and rose hip and hibiscus tea? Cod liver is amazing. I, I suggest everybody listening to my voice eat one can of cod liver a week. You can mix it with mustard. You can mix it. You can put it in a salad. You can actually fry it in bacon grease. 
There's so many ways you can eat cod liver. It's very mild. It does not taste like liver. And it's got all of this. It's a, it's a superfood multivitamin, okay, in a little three or four ounce can. It's teeny, teeny, tiny. It's, there's not much of it at all. And just that one serving a week, you're going to be blown away at the nutrition that's in it. Forgot. Uh, this is the Freestyle Libre. <clears throat> Libre? Yes. Libre? That's the least yeah. expensive one that we were able to find. Um, <clears throat> but... I think that's what they say. Moon goddess. Let me an answer this. Please Moon talk goddess. about mercury fillings in my teeth. They're so expensive to remove. Can keto or carnivore help? So mercury is, is a toxic heavy metal. There's no doubt about that. Now, all dentists will tell you that the amalgam in your fillings, that the mercury does not leach out. I have seen research and I have seen video that make me highly suspicious that that is not true. I, I still have a few amalgam fillings, uh, but I would like to have them removed one day, but you're right. It's ungodly expensive. I didn't know that. I got a few from back, from in, back my in the day. teenage years yeah. when I didn't listen I to Granny Berry like about brushing my mistake. teeth. I didn't have a cavity until I was 12 years old. And when, when, once puberty struck and I knew it all, then I would go in there and I would wet the toothbrush and move the toothpaste. And That was way more work than Literally, I would take twice as long teeth. faking it Boys as just weird. brushing my teeth. I don't know what the hell is wrong with I me. have I don't no know. cavities and no I don't know. Philip, will you and when will you and Kim release your lab book? It's 99.99% finished. Uh, we've already released a uh, the free PDF version to our five dollar and up patrons on patreon.com. And as soon as all the typos are done, it's gonna be live for purchase as a PDF, and then we're gonna have like a workbook folder. Uh, version coming soon there. Kim will be able to explain this better. Yep. Uh, all the patrons on my Patreon will get first dibs to know when the book goes on sale. And then after they've they've had a chance to buy it, then I'll announce it to the world. Tisha tells it. Tisha tells it. I'm OMAD Keto Carnivore. I've lost 28 pounds in six weeks, reversing my anemia, hypertension, type 2 diabetes. Thank <clears> you, guys. Beautiful. Well done, Tisha. Now you go and tells it. serious oh my god brenda how much beef or chicken liver can i give my two-year-old daughter and how often as much as she wants it yeah. uh beckett ate chicken liver that was one of his first foods because very soft and super nutrient dense um well about once a week probably yeah. we would put yeah. it on his plate oh yeah he, he was very little then he would eat yeah. an ounce once or twice a week he easy. had a little silicone spoon and i would just put that on there and then he would just yep he ate it eat up it. Yeah. yum yum um, so if they're willing to eat it, then, you know, offer it. And if they don't want to eat it, then they won't eat it. You know what I mean? It's not, yep. Yep. you have to force it. But if you use Nisha's chicken nugget recipe and cook chicken liver using that, and it's a carnivore, uh, chicken nugget recipe. If you make chicken livers like that, ain't no kid in America not going to eat that because it's freaking delicious. Debbie says, um, asking this on behalf of Carl, I'm hey, Carl. way overweight, just completed my first month of stretch carnivore, no cheating. I lost four pounds of water the first week, nothing since. Any recommendations? Yeah, I have a video on this channel, Debbie. After this is over, go watch Carl. it. Carl. Oh, Carl. It's called the 13 reasons why your weight loss might stall. You need to investigate each one of those 13 He's reasons. He's on his first month of stretch carnivore. Yeah, but now uh, the first month, it's very common to lose some water weight and then for not much else to happen. Uh, don't call this a weight loss stall until you haven't lost any more weight in three months because I promise you, your metabolism is healing. The, the machinery is getting geared up. Before long, he's going to notice some fat loss on the scale. Carl also really encouraged you to use um, measurements along with the scale. The scale's <laughs> fine. I understand you want to check your weight. That's fine. Uh, but do inches as well. because sometimes. Oh, my God. I, Beckett brought my tailor's tape back. Sometimes you can be losing inches yep. and uh, the scale stays the same. So. so buy a tailor's tape just like this, and you're going to wrap it around. <laughs> And you're going to be like, mm hmm, 40 and a half. And you're going to write that down. And you're going to do that for your neck, your shoulders, your bust or your chest, whichever you have, your midsection, right around the belly button, your hips, your waist, your thigh, and your calf. And you're going to write those down. And you're going to recheck those once a month. And at the end of a month, you're like, I don't, I haven't lost any pounds. Then you're going to check your measurements and go, oh, crap, I've lost eight inches. It is. Nurses Week. Happy Nurses Week to my fellow nurses. You guys rocking. You know it. Yeah. 
It's also, I think, Teacher's Week the same week. So if you're a teacher, you also rock and you also know it. My mother's a teacher. My grandfather was a teacher and a principal. Mm -hmm. Pretty much every cousin that I have is a teacher. <laughs> we love our teachers and our nurses. Happy nurses and teachers. Yes. Everybody loves Raymond says, is it okay to eat beef tallow by the spoonful? Why, yes, it is. I mean, yes. I would cook with it. I would I would eat the, the fat that normally comes attached to your beef. Tell your butcher or your meat manager to not trim the fat. But if you if you enjoy eating beef tallow, I'd much rather you eat beef tallow or butter by the spoonful than peanut butter. Yes. Jane, thanks a lot. Jane, <clears throat> true blue, high stress childhood antibiotics for four years and chemo and mm. a sad diet mm. has caused leaky yep. gut. I've uh, been 30 days on med carnivore with 125 billion probiotics. Half a message. Where's the rest of the message? True blue. Let's see I... if I can see it over here. We're looking true blue. So if your question still true blue, loaded next day, why I'm going to do carnivore for 90 days. That's I'm worried my lucky gut will never heal. Can I have garlic and spices? I, if I were you, I would do 90 days of strict carnivore beef, butter, bacon, and eggs with salt. no spices. Salt. Just Redmond's real salt. See that little container right there? <laughs> Redmond's real salt is nothing but salt and some trace minerals. They, there's no aluminum. There's no dextrose, which is, you know, Umbrella Girl cereal, uh, salt that has sugar in it. Dextrose. Who knew, right? Discount code nation. Yeah. And there's links down in the show notes for Redmond's. Um, also, best toothpaste is something that is for adults that has, you know, like Tom's is good. Yep. Redmond's also, though. Yep. Sugar free toothpaste. and no fluoride. That's what you're looking for. Yeah. So uh, if you're on the Redmond's website to buy salt, might as well get pick us on mm -hmm. toothpaste. But True Blue, you're going to be shocked at how much healthier your gut feels after 90 days of carnivore. Beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Triple B and E. Justin, I have a very high triglycerides and cholesterol levels with the carnivore diet or keto diet. Help with those levels. I've read reports about doing low-fat diets, yeah, low fat. Low-fat's never going to fix your triglycerides. In fact, it might make your triglycerides worse. Keto, ketovore, or carnivore is going to get your triglycerides back down to a normal level within weeks to months. Okay, it's going to be delicious and nutritious, and you're going to have a normal triglyceride level. Now, if you're worried about your total cholesterol level or your LDL cholesterol level, I've got YouTube videos on this channel that you can watch right after this live to help you understand why you shouldn't worry about your LDL cholesterol, but you should worry about your triglycerides, your HDL, your A1C, and your C-peptide. Those are very, very important. Todd and Jen, very good points. You can use baking soda. You don't even have to buy toothpaste. Right. Yeah. 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 My mom used to make me do that for my teeth. I hated it and I'm pretty scarred. So I would never Did do you that. Like I just the powder? probably have like a little trauma from what like, I hated the taste of it. Mm. I felt like my breath that was funny and weird. <laughs> like, uh, no, I can't do it. But you all, you definitely can use some baking soda. Yeah. You don't need to go out and buy special toothpaste. Yeah. I guess Beckett's not going to make it home in time tonight. You know, he may have um, fallen asleep. On yeah, he may, be, he may be napping. Yeah, let's get one more good question. Uh, Greg says, hemochromatosis and carnivore diet. So, Greg, are you, are, even though you have hemochromatosis, are you still a human being? Yes, you are. So you need to eat a proper human diet. Absolutely. Uh, proper human diet is not going to make your iron levels inappropriately high. Uh, it's not going to make your hemoglobin and hematocrit inappropriately high. The, a proper human diet is going to move your lab levels right where they need to be. Now, you have a genetic defect that gives you hemochromatosis, so you have to pay special attention to iron overload and other things associated. You would have to pay careful attention to those things whether you ate a proper human diet or not. Ray says, uh, this is the last one. Thank you for the super chat, Ray. Dr. Berry, thanks to your videos and the proper human diet. I've lost 90 pounds and I feel amazing. Thank you. Beautiful, job, Ray. Ray. Beautiful, Good beautiful. Job. Guys, thanks so much for the super chats. Any final words, beautiful wife? If you were a mama, mama to be, breastfeeding mama, or you just think that I'm cool and you want to come hang out with me, my channel is linked in the description, or you can just put I do. Nisha loves it, Nisha Berry into YouTube, and it'll pop up. Come hang out with me. We have a good time over on my channel. I show you uh, <laughs> what we eat in a day, daily vlogs. You can see what Beckett eats, and when Bonnie gets here, you can see what she eats too. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we already did that. Okay. Uh, if, oh, did we talk about rose hip and hibiscus? I, yeah, rose tea hip now? and hibiscus teas. It's fine as long as it's sugar free and no carbohydrates. But I don't think there's any special magic in rose hip or hibiscus tea. Uh, Here's Beckett. If you, oh, Beckett's coming. Hang on, don't leave. If you have a important question about nutrition, medicine, uh, diagnosis, or medication, lifestyle and you didn't get an answer tonight, you can become a patron on my Patreon. There's a link down in the show notes. We have four additional live Q&As each and every week inside of our private protected Patreon tribe. Uh, and you can get your question answered there. Patreon is per month, not per video. So That's right. you just have access to it. You can cancel it anytime. That's right. Uh, you can pay. You can upgrade. You can downgrade. You can, yeah. Cancel. Anytime you can pay a, a year in advance. And I think you get a 10% discount or something like that. But yeah, right. it's totally up to you. You can cancel anytime. You can upgrade. You can downgrade, like I said. Yeah. Yep. Um, Beckett. We're going to wait because sometimes he might be asleep. I don't he know. wants to work with us. And if we quit, then he gets upset because he yeah, came gonna, to work and yeah. we quit before he got here. So, <laughs> but sometimes he doesn't want to work. So we'll see what kind of mood he's in tonight. Liz says, good night, Granny Berry. Good night, Granny Berry. We love you. <laughs> uh, what are the blood glucose levels we should be looking for? Cat asks. So you want a fasting blood sugar between 60 and 99, cat. And you after a meal, one hour after a meal, you never want your blood sugar to go higher than 140, uh, ideally lower than that, but that's kind of the cutoff. If, if you're having numbers higher than that, then you're either some degree of prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. Becky Berry! Becky Berry! Oh, yeah, you want to see my pretty ring? Yeah. Do you like it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Daddy did good. Look, I got mommy a bracelet, too. And you look like a king. I look like a king. Ooh. Oh, wow. Come up here and look at this bracelet. She also got a necklace, too. There's Becky Berry. Say hi, everybody. Hi, baby. <laughs> see mama's necklace? See that? What is that? A ruby. A ruby. Ruby and a B. That's right. What's the B for? You. No. Me. Yes. B for Becky. That's right. All right. We're going to sign off, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. We'll see you next time. Now, if you want to do another live Q&A tomorrow at 6 p.m., become a patron and you'll be there. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Tell everybody bye, baby Becky. Tell them bye-bye.